Hello, Foothills family. Dave's away on a week's vacation, so he can't be here with me, but he sends you his greetings. Now, I believe that what I'm going to say in this update is important, and this subject has been much on my heart. Please listen carefully to this entire short message as I will be discussing several different matters. As you may have heard, just over a week ago, the Centers of Disease Control released a shocking survey of the American population. 41% reported that they had at least one or more mental health issues over a recent 30-day period. And these issues included such things as anxiety disorders, depression, and the beginning or increasing abuse of various substances. But most shocking of all was that 10.7 reported having seriously considered suicide in that same 30-day period. And that's more than two and a half times what's normal over an entire year. Now, we'll get back to that study in a moment, but it's a clear indication of the stress, pressure, and uncertainty that COVID-19 and the business disruption of the lockdown, the social unrest, political di divisiveness, and isolation is having on people. Now, the first thing I want to say is that Christians are not immune from these pressures. Many Christians are experiencing emotional and mental stress. And God has made provision for this by giving us the gift of life-giving mutual fellowship. We encourage each other and experience the Lord's strength as we gather in His presence. And we need that spiritual strength that comes from gathering together. Remember what Hebrews 23, 10, 23 says, let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together as has become the habit of some, but rather encouraging one another. Now, Christians of all times have always gathered together, no matter how great the difficulties or dangers involved. And all you have to do is come to church and feel the peace, the glory, and the strength of God as we gather to worship in order for you to realize its importance and value. Now, online services can never be a substitute for being at church. So let's discuss the question, is it safe to go to church? In the early days of our battle with COVID-19, before we knew much about it, and out of an abundance of caution, on March 19th, our governor declared a statewide lockdown, which included the shuttering of churches along with many other activities and businesses. The news media ran stories that caused many people to become very fearful. And that's a fear many people still struggle with today. Now it's been over five months since that day, and we've learned a lot about COVID-19, and in particular, about community spread. Now, community spread is defined as any time three or more individuals catch COVID-19 in a community gathering. Now, what I'm going to tell you next will probably be a great surprise to most of you. According to the County of San Diego website, since early March when COVID-19 first appeared up until today, there have been a total of 12 deaths in the county from people who caught COVID-19 in a community setting like in a store, a business, a bar, a restaurant, a gym, a church, etc. Now, that's just 12 deaths in a population of over 3.3 million people. Now, while any single death is tragic, let's put that number 12 in perspective. Each year in San Diego County, on average, 1,580 people die from accidents, all of which are preventable. And sadly, 102 are murdered. Now, up to, the, to today, there have been 222 cases of community spread, not counting those in nursing homes. Of those 58, excuse me, of those, 58 happened in businesses. 56 happened in bars in just a short time they were opened. 20 happened in healthcare settings, but only eight have been under the category of faith-based. This category includes all religious services of any kind by any religion, weddings, funerals, and who knows what else is in that category of faith-based. I am only aware of four of those that were in church services. 
So only four or so out of a total of 222. These facts are all on the website. Now the facts tell us that going to church is not dangerous. You don't have to be afraid to come back to church. And if you're careful to practice social distancing and wear a mask, you can do lower the risk to almost nothing. The truth is that almost every one of us do things every week that are much more dangerous than going to church, like driving a car, climbing a ladder, taking prescription medicines, and many other things. Now, we will continue to follow CDC guidelines and keep church a safe place to be. And we will continue to stream our services so that all of you who have more severe conditions and feel the need to stay home can continue to join with us online. And we look forward to your being able to join us sometime in the future. Now, let me return again to that report, that same CDC study, because the results are even more troubling among young people. Of those 18 to 24 years of age, 75% reported some form of mental health issue. 63% reported suffering from anxiety, depression, or both. 25 and a half said that they had thought about suicide seriously in the last 30 days. 24% say they had begun or increased substance abuse during the month of June. And although those under 18 were not surveyed, they also are in greater need at this time. Children and young people desperately need God. They need an active, vibrant church. People of every age group are hurting and need our help during this time. Among those 25 to 44 years of age, 20% began or increased drug or alcohol abuse during those same 30 days, and 16% had considered suicide. We need to bring those who desperately need God with us to church. We need to be inviting people to church like never before. We need to say to people, during this difficult time, I find peace and strength at church. Why don't you come with me? People need to discover and experience the peace and hope that comes from worshiping in the Lord's presence and hearing His word preached. Never before in my lifetime has the need and opportunity been so great. We need to reach out and invite people. And we need to take authority over a spirit of fear regarding COVID. It is a spirit of fear that has been against our entire society, and it's even come against the church. We need to rise up and break its hold and bring people to Jesus. We need to be the salt and light like never before. Now this weekend, I will be preaching a message of hope and it will appeal both to the saved and the unsaved alike. And we'll end the service with a salvation altar call. So be sure to bring someone who needs to hear a message of hope. Our Saturday evening service has plenty of room, so I invite you to consider that. Both Saturday and Sunday begin at 7 p.m. And I hope I'll see you there. God bless you, Foothills.